Um, I'm gonna be shadowing my roommate today. He's a professor at a community college, so uh, I guess I'll try to find him. Can you tell this used to be a high school? <laughs> yeah, it kind of looks like it. I've never even been in this campus before. Over there, there's another wing. It's got all the cool AV and design and communication stuff. We're headed up to the third floor. So you just have your one main office that you kind of keep year to year? Oh, uh, yep. yep. Yeah. So how do classrooms work, though? Do you just, like, get assigned a room? Is that usually the same each it year, varies. too? No, they change. Um, sometimes I'll be in the same room, but it can just be all over the place. I'm not really sure how they schedule it, but <laughs> so like if I have multiple classes during the day, I might be all over the place in different classrooms. <laughs> so every classroom just got the same setup, like a dry erase board, projector, plugins for my laptop. Yeah, I guess it's not all that personalized. <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah, this place is pretty big. Yeah, so I figured it'd be easier just to come get you <laughs> right this way. So how many semesters are there? Do they actually do four semesters? No, it's, um, there's like two main semesters and then there's the summer semester which is shortened. Mm -hmm. So for my job, I'm only required to teach the two main semesters. And if I teach over the summer, that's extra pay. No, oh, nice. Um, but otherwise I use summers to, um, whether I teach or not, to like prep for the next year. These are the faculty office halls. These are some of my colleagues here on this side. Well, the other professors. Elsewhere. Yeah, <laughs> other people in my department. This is my office. I was gonna try to clean it up, but <laughs> I did not. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's fine. So, you get to see how it really is. Yep, this is the real what a professor's office usually looks like. <laughs> yeah, so what do you usually do while you're like not teaching the class? Um, there's... While we're only in the class for a few hours a week, there's a few hours of course prep. So preparing the lectures, preparing the class activities, um, those kind of things, and then also grading. Um, then answering emails from students, or like what I'm doing right now is technically my office hours. So this is a part of the a set you know, time every week where they know they can stop in and talk to me if they need to. Yeah, you just gotta be available. Yep, I'm just <coughs> available. Um, and then there's other parts to our job, like um, we do service, we have service requirements, so that includes serving on committees and also serving on and just doing work for our department, building courses, hmm. that kind of thing. A lot of administrative type stuff. Do you ever get involved in like extracurricular type clubs and stuff? I have not, although many do. So for example, one of my colleagues, Daniel Poole, he, um, he's in my department and he is the faculty advisor for the social work club. So um, we do have some psychology clubs, but I'm not the advisors on that, the advisor on that. Right. So you are a psychology professor. Yes. Like, uh, what kind of qualifications does it actually take to get into you know, being a professor? So. It can vary a little bit by degree, by what discipline you're in, but for psychology, um, at the very least, you need a master's in psychology, um, mm -hmm. and that's to be able to teach um, at the community college level. But more likely, you need a PhD, and that's to mm -hmm. teach full time at um, a four year institution, um, like the University of Utah or Utah State or BYU. Yeah. Um, so I have a master's myself. I don't have a PhD, but that's becoming rarer and rarer, even for community colleges. Hmm. So it's an investment. It's definitely yeah. How much more work would it take for you to go for a PhD? Probably about three or four more years, actually. If oh. I was to just start over again, because I did actually do a couple years of the PhD, but then left it to take this job. Um, so that was a little not typical. Yeah. Not typical. Usually people complete the PhD. Yeah. Um, but the PhD in psychology is usually it's not like you're just spending that many more years in a classroom. You're teaching, you're doing research under supervision of your mm. advisors. So it's more of a job than, than school. Yeah, I was gonna say, would it seem weird if you just started going back to school as a student instead of being the teacher? And <laughs> that would be hard, to, yeah, that would be hard to do. <laughs> Especially just juggling two very demanding things at once. Mm -hmm. um, some people have done it, but 
Yeah, I think it's interesting that like if you want to teach grade school or like high school, then you just have to get you know a degree in a, in teaching. Mm -hmm. But then if you want to teach at a college, you just have to get a degree in whatever it is you're teaching. Yeah, it is kind of interesting. And so, also it used to be that there wasn't much training on how to teach in graduate school, mm -hmm. but now they're starting to move more towards like when I was in graduate school, I took a couple courses on how to teach well. Mm -hmm. So that, that's that's a benefit. That's something that's yeah, they probably have a lot of PhD just nerds who have like no communication skills. That that's a big problem. Yeah, so <laughs> they might be really good researchers, or on the psychology side, they might be really good therapists, or you know, but they're not necessarily good teachers, right? So they're not a good fit for teaching jobs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I mean, with your qualifications, you're kind of just stuck to only teaching one subject at a community college. You wouldn't be able to like go over to a high school or teach a different subject here? I would have to get like the teaching certification if I say I wanted to go over to to teach high school. Hmm. Um, would it be easy? Yeah, it probably would be. I think it would be like, it depends on the state. I don't know the details of that. You'll mm -hmm. have to interview a teacher for that. <laughs> but um, that would be probably another year or so of like getting the teacher certificate usually. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, teaching, teachers aren't the same as professors. Yeah. You know, they kind of do the same thing. Yeah. So uh, what would you say the schedule is like as a professor? Um, all over the place. So the, the courses are all over the place. Like I teach morning classes and night classes. Um, and then there's all of the other stuff, you know, the prepping. Mm -hmm. um, so that adds some flexibility. Like I'm able to have some level of flexibility. It's not a nine to five job necessarily. Right. I mean, if you really want that schedule, you can make that for yourself. But for the most part, there's some flexibility where, you know, you, you just kind of work not typical hours yeah. and then there's it's hard to to leave work you can't well it's hard to like leave work at home if you will because there's always something that could be done like grading or something yeah so there's just a lot you could be doing yeah even if i'm not on campus in office hours or teaching you know i'm at home at night grading mm -hmm. or reading to prepare for whatever i'm teaching just like so do you do you create the assignments and the tests and all that or is a lot of that prepared for you it's a mix, so I actually just finished creating a test for a class a few minutes ago. Um, so there's some resources out there, test banks and things, but um, professors will share material to some extent, um, because at least the activity, especially for like class activities and things. So it's a mix, mixed mm. bag. Yeah, so like, how does the, I guess the upper management sort of monitor what you're doing? Do you get like inspected and that kind of thing? Yeah, so um, especially since I'm what they call tenure track, meaning that I'm full time and I'm working towards getting tenure, um, which is kind of you're in this like probationary period of here at six years where you're just really proving yourself um, hmm. to like be a good teacher, to be a good member of the school community, um, productive. And um, then you get tenure, which just offers a, some level of job, a more level of job security. Um, but with that comes, um, I will have, I have a tenure committee, so that's my, my associate dean, which is kind of what's also called a department chair in some places, and some of, some peers, some people, some coworkers, and they will observe my classes occasionally, they will look over my materials that I give them to show what I'm doing in class and like t give them sample tests and things, mm -hmm. um, so that they can see that I'm, I'm doing my job, you know what I'm saying? Right. Um, there's the student evaluations that if you've ever had, had a college course, you know, they get those at the end of the semester where they ask you to anonymously fill out those. And those are actually really important because that yeah. helps them know, you know, are they teaching you, what, you know, are they doing a good job? Yeah, so do like your students' grades make a difference on your, like, uh, your performance, I guess? Mm. Like if all your students are failing, they're probably going to look in. Yeah, <laughs> like I'd say, if, if everyone's if everyone's getting A's or everyone's getting if everyone's failing, then that would look fishy, you mm -hmm. know. Um, so I mean, that I think that would be the only case. All oh, right. Um, yeah. But I guess. So, what are uh, some of your favorite parts about the job? Um, I like the flexibility of the schedule. Um, Do you pick your class schedules? A little bit, yeah. So it's it's a mix between two, like. I have some flexibility on what I can choose, but yeah. sometimes, you know, the school's like, we need to offer this class at this time because that's when students need it or want it. Yeah. And so, so it's a mix, but for the most part, I'm, I'm picking my schedule. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so that there's that, and then also it's just I really like to learn. I like to learn about what about my case psychology. So I really just get paid to learn and then teach what I've learned to people, hmm. which I, I really enjoy. Yeah, and it feels like it sounds a little cheesy, but it feels like I make a difference. You know, <laughs> yeah. when when people get really interested in the topic or yeah. And then you get to go take big vacations all summer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, like I, you know, it's we have slower summers, but that's when you're doing kind of course prep and stuff. But you definitely get the vacations in there because I can't take yeah. a vacation like right now, right? Like yeah, you're stuck. Once the schedule set, you can't be canceling classes unless it's an emergency, you know. Um, so so there's some of that. But. Yeah, so uh, when did you actually decide that this is what you wanted to get into? So. When I was in college, getting my bachelor's degree, I knew I wanted to go into psychology, and I had some really good psychology professors, and I realized that I kind of wanted to be them. I wanted their their lifestyle. I wanted to do what they were doing, which was just learning and teaching. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's when I knew. I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to do it because it is a competitive field. There's more people that want to be professors than there are physicians. Yeah, isn't the psychology like the most common major right now? Yeah, so psychology is... Depending on where you look, it's business and psychology usually are neck and neck on the most common major. Yeah. And a lot of people get psychology degrees plan on going to totally other things, mm -hmm. but um, you know, they want to go into therapy or they want to do you know, HR or mm -hmm. other things um, or social services, social work type stuff. Um, so there's like other things you can do with the psych degree. But, hmm. um, yeah, I think a lot of people just assume you go into psychology, you just become a therapist, and that's all there is. <laughs> yeah, that's what a lot of my students think on you know day one. It's like, okay, there's a lot more to psychology than just the therapy <laughs> side, which is a big and an important part of it, for sure. Yeah. But there's a lot more going, like, to learn and to study. That's one of the misconceptions of the whole field. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so what kind of advice would you give to someone who's looking into trying to become a professor or just going into psychology? Um, so if you want to be in like a field that's truly psychology, so therapy or psych professor or psychology researcher, you're looking at at least a master's and most likely a PhD. Um, so it's, it's a commitment, right? Mm -hmm. um, so you, um, and it's competitive. It's competitive even to get to, into most graduate schools. So you have to be a good student, work hard, get a lot of experience. Um, and yeah, just know that you're kind of in for the long haul a little bit. It's, it's, a, it's a lot mm -hmm. of effort to get to those jobs to be a therapist or a professor. Yeah. Um, it's doable. And at the grad school level, you're oftentimes, depending on the circumstances, but oftentimes, you're not paying tuition, you're sometimes being paid, so. Um, yeah, that's good. <laughs> so that's a benefit, right? You're not, um, let's see, what else? And yeah, if you wanna go to professor, it's com to get a full-time professor position is competitive, so it's just knowing that people should seek it out. I was able to do it, but um, it's probably a good idea to have a plan B. Yeah. Right? Like, be thinking about what, how you can use your skills towards something else. Mm -hmm. um, so just, so just in case, you know, that one, the first plan doesn't work out, you have something else. Yeah, I mean, what is there, like 30 students per professor, so there's not a lot of professor positions open. <laughs> yeah, so professors, you know, typically, especially tenure track, once you get it, you don't really leave till you retire, and so more people are graduating with PhDs wanting to teach than there are people retiring every year. Hmm. Um, and then there's other economic factors, like schools will cut down on the amount of full-time professor, Oh, positions yeah. and things like that to save money so it's yeah there's a lot of factors that lead into that right so how many hours a week would you say like is your whole work week and how's it breaking down during the like standard school year the main semesters I easily put in 50 hours a week um, sometimes more it'll fluctuate which is one of those nice things about it it's like sometimes it's a little or low key, sometimes I'm cranking out 14 hour days every day, all week, mm -hmm. and into the weekend I'm working all weekend. And how much of that time is just teaching a class? Um, so I spend 15 hours a week in the classroom, about. Hmm. So that's just in the classroom, and then all the prep and grading and, and all those other administrative requirements are on top of that. Wow. Um, so th there's sometimes there's weeks that are a little more mellow, more like a 40 hour week, but not unheard of to crank 60 hours of workout. Yeah, it's um, just kind of funny to think that the 
the vision of your job is such a small part of the job itself. Yeah. Being in the classroom is just a small piece of it. Yeah, I like to think of it like like you know a hardworking like touring musician, right? They're doing so much more even when they're not on tour, right? They're 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 recording new albums, they're practicing. Yeah. They're doing this other housekeeping stuff, like, and that's kind of like our sense. Like we're on tour for six you know, or nine months out of the year, but the rest of the time it's that needed relaxation those needed vacations and also prepping for the next time yeah and even when you're on tour you're only actually doing the show for like an hour in the day yeah but you're doing all sorts of other things like getting from place to place setting up breaking down right yeah there's all that back end stuff that you don't necessarily see as a fan or as a student so is there like anything worth showing me around at the campus here um sure i can walk you around and show you go look around Faculty offices where we're, you know, scheduled to be. Even though I like to work from home myself. This is where the students come and find you. Yep. Yeah, but they can, students know they can, and you know my boss. They they know they can come find me right now, even though I'm now wandering the halls. <laughs> um, there's you know work rooms with things for faculty to do. There's no one's in it. You have access to all the classrooms. Not all of them, just the ones that I I teach in. So yeah, this is one I teach in. Um, a couple times a week, pretty basic. You, know, you got your dry erase boards, you got a projector. Um, I have my own laptop, a work laptop that they give to me, so I just take it and I can plug it in to run it on the projector if I want. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is kind of the standard room. Yeah. In the newer areas, of course, it's a little nicer since this is an older room. So while like this doesn't look quite like a traditional college campus, um, we have some of the same things. There's a small food court area, you can walk down here, walk through it. Um, a big theater, the Grand Theater, there's a bookstore, um, there's a, they just opened up a new um, little gym here, so for people to use, so it's got some of those things you see in a typical college campus. What are the biggest differences between a community college and like an actual university? So the big difference is community colleges are open yeah, enrollment, which means that in our case at Solid Community College, all, as long as you have a high school diploma or equivalent, like a GED, you can register here. So it's hmm. not something you have to apply and be accepted for having a certain GPA in high school. So that means everyone has the access to the education here. Oh. Um, it's good. also a little more bare bones, which makes it cheaper. So you get less of the amenities and, and stuff you might get from a university. It doesn't go this way. To see. Uh, um, so those are the big differences. It's going to be a lot cheaper and it's more available. So, so it's a good place for people to go when they're first starting out. Yeah, they're um, just trying to test the water, yeah, see if they want to get into school. And you can afford to take a class for a couple hundred bucks and decide, is this what I'm interested in? No? Okay, I'll try something else, you know, um, without having to put a lot into it. Um, also, we're just what we call a commuter school. There's no dorms or anything like that. Right, so mm -hmm. you're, you're kind of on your own for that. And people can do this part-time a lot easier. Yep, yeah, and that's the other thing with community colleges, it's really focused around helping people on their schedules. So we have a lot of online classes, even though I don't teach any online classes right now. Um, lots of night classes, I teach a lot of those. We even offer week weekend classes now, so you can take classes on Saturday, that works for your schedule. Anytime you got free time. Yep, yeah. There's sometimes I wish I could just take like really cheap classes, not for any credit or anything, just for the just for the fun of it. You can actually do that, and it's called auditing. So it's yes. I think it's only like hundred dollars a class or something, and you're just not getting a grade, and you're not getting like credits to transfer. Yeah, and you're not so. required to do the homework or anything. Yep. So you could totally do that and take a, one of these classes, like in radio production or whatever. Sandy, one in, I guess it's West Jordan. They just built one in out near the airport for the technical trades. And then they're building one in Harriman. So it just goes back to give people access. Hmm. So is the Taylorsville one like the main hub? Yeah, that's the main one. And it's on like 45th South in Redwood. Yeah. So I teach out there at least once a semester for one class. And yeah, standard little small college library. Hmm. Does your, do your classes ever involve like um, traveling, like field trip type things? Um, there was one class called an eco, eco psychology that we used to offer. We haven't offered it in a while. 
a couple years, but um, that's where we would actually take people on a camping trip down in southern Utah. Huh. Not really much over there to see. Um, <laughs> there's a small one coming up in one of my classes. We're going to go downtown to view a film that relates to um, some relates to some aspects of psychology. Hmm. So just and out at the city library. But that's it, about it. Is, is that something that you get to decide and put all together? Yep. yep. And like, I get a lot of. I mean, there's some like, especially with the camping trip. There's there's risks and insurance issues and things like that, right? Because we're taking you know students out to the desert for five days. So there's some hoops to jump through when we do that. Mm -hmm. But far less than say if you're going to take you know kids in high school on a field trip. Or something. Oh yeah. Don't need a million permission slips. <laughs> no, don't need permission slips. <laughs> Say this is what we're doing. You can come or not. Right? Yeah. You're an adult. You decide. Like, you know. Great part about being an adult. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of nice about being a professor. You, you're not jumping through so many hoops as, as high school teachers might. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks well, for well, thanks yeah. for letting me come visit. I'll see you later. <laughs> All right. Thanks. That was pretty fun. I know I say that pretty much every time. <laughs> yeah, I've been living with him for about two years now. seen where he works or really seen what he does but hopefully you got something out of this if you're looking into being a professor or just going into psychology or whatever but uh, thanks for watching